Hello, this lecture is on reconstruction. Th those, the reconstructions, the years from 1865 to 1877. The Civil War lasted four years and it profoundly changed the United States. The death of 620,000 men left many women and bereft of husbands. The war simultaneously spurred an economic stimulus and an economic stagnation. Northern industry underwent impressive development, but the South experienced widespread destruction. The scorched earth policy of union forces is a case in point. Politically, states' rights had been dealt a major blow with the federal government gaining predominance over the states. The war and the abolition of slavery greatly affected African-Americans. Free labor was now the be triumph everywhere in America. Gone was the day when any American law, federal or state, upheld the institution of slavery. Union victory over the Confederacy, however, did not mean total victory for Blacks. Four million African Americans were free, but not yet equal. In the immediate period after the war, politicians and unders pondered how the rebellious states would be brought back into the Union. How should the victorious North proceed with the reconstruction of a wounded nation? What would be the place of freed Blacks in American society? As the Southern states were admitted to the Union, Democrats became politically active and were assisted by the Ku Klux Klan to limit the rights of African Americans. The Reconstruction era that began in April 1865 and lasted until early 1877 witnessed much political dissension and disappointment. John Wilkes Booth was the actor who hated Abraham Lincoln and the Republican Party's opposition of slavery. Before Abraham Lincoln's assassination on April 15, 1865 by Wilkes, the president had pushed for moderation on the treatment of the South and Southern rebels. Lincoln declared, enough lives have been sacrificed. We must extinguish our resentments if we expect harmony and union. There is too much disposition in certain quarters to hector and dictate to the people of the South to refuse to recognize them as fellow citizens. Such persons have too little respect for Southerners' rights. I do not share feelings of that kind. At odds with this approach were Republicans such as Massachusetts Senator Charles Sumner, who was representative of the vengeful politicians wanting to punish the South severely. These politicians believed that a heavy handed approach was the best method to see Blacks gain equal rights. President Andrew Johnson attempted to follow Lincoln's moderate position, but his character flaws hindered his success. Johnson was a Southerner born in North Carolina in poverty conditions. As a teenager, he apprenticed as a tailor and later gained political success in the Democratic Party. In 1864, the Republican Party chose this Democrat as Lincoln's vice president, mainly because of his opposition to the plantation aristocracy of the South, who he blamed for much of the war. He had political gifts, but he also had a vile temper. 
his opponents claimed that he drank a lot. And there was that one incident uh, in front of Abraham Lincoln where he gave a speech and he was obviously abbreviated. Um, some suggest that this was a result of him coming off an Ill illness with typhoid and that he had taken some, some alcohol to steady his nerves. Anyway, the opponents have, had subsequently run with the, the idea that he was a, a drunk. His character crippled his chances to work amiably with others. Also lacking a formal education, he had insecurities that made, his, made him difficult to work with. He could be uh, quite stubborn. And so generally he just wasn't suited to, to work with, with others, uh, particularly with other political leaders, especially those who uh, obviously were at odds with what he was presenting, his, his opponents that is. Johnson granted pardons to many Confederates who took an oath to support the United States Constitution. However, it would take several years before all states were readmitted into the Union. Southern intransigence continued and Southern politicians adopted black codes that limited the rights of former slaves. Historian Paul Johnson writes that black codes varied from state to state and were more severe than others. But all, the, all had the consequences of relegating Blacks to second-class citizenship. One Southern Democratic Party platform of October 1865 stated that, that we hold this to be a government of white people made and to be perpetuated for the exclusive benefit of the white race and that people of African descent cannot be considered as citizens of the United States and that there can in no event nor any circumstances be any equality between the white and other races. Sadly, this position was shared by other Southern states. Congress sought to address problems faced by African Americans. In uh, going back in 1863, of course, we, we see Lincoln had abolished slavery in much of the South with, the, with his uh, Emancipation Pro Proclamation. Uh, in February 1865, um, just a couple of months before his assassination, Congress had passed the 13th Amendment of the Constitution that made slavery unconstitutional throughout America. And it reads, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States. So a very important amendment, the 13th Amendment. In the following month, so this would be March of 1865, Lincoln signed the bill that created the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands. This was within the War Department, and it was better known as the Freedmen's Bureau. It was to have the, quote, supervision and management of all abandoned lands and the control of all subjects relating to refugees and freed men. The goal was to assist former slaves in making the transition from slavery to freedom. The agency provided emergency food and housing, jobs and schools for black communities. Later, President Andrew Johnson opposed 
any extension of the Freedmen's Bureau, arguing it represented misguided interference by the federal government in the business of the states. Historians' interpretations of the Freedmen Bureau range from it being as kind-hearted and mostly successful to being paternalistic and too flawed to make a positive impact for Blacks. So again, looking, looking at the, the act there, um, very, very important uh, step in having Congress doing something for the former slaves. In 1866, the following year, Congress passed the Civil Rights Bill that struck down the Black Codes, upholding states' rights. Johnson vetoed the bill, but Congress the Congress had uh, had a two-thirds majority to pass it again. The next month, the Joint Committee on Reconstruction recommended the adoption of the 14th Amendment. Section one of the 14th Amendment clarified the rights of American citizens. And it reads, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws, of the law, laws, excuse me. Conflict between President Johnson and his opponents persisted. He urged the defeat of the 14th Amendment and 12 states actually refused to ratify it. Kentucky and Delaware had joined the 10 former Confederate states to oppose the amendment. Failing to win ratification by the required three fourths of the states, the amendment went down in defeat. This was a temporary setback because the 14th amendment went into effect two years later. Three other sections of the amendment clarified any acts of insurrection by persons holding civil or military office, the eligibility of office of former rebels, and the debts incurred by the Confederacy. So three other sections dealing with some other important, important issues. Johnson's actions offended many in the North and Republicans demand, demanding forceful reconstruction won large majorities in the Senate and the House in the 1866 midterm election. And looking at the results, looking at the map of the 1866 election, we see that, of course, there were yet to be the states readmitted in the, the, the Confederate states being readmitted into the Union. So the, the voting was, um, <clears throat> did not, did, uh, those states were not uh, a part of this, of this vote. So maybe no surprise then that uh, the, the Republicans won such, such large majorities. But con Congress and Johnson adopted intemperate positions that prevented any chance of political balance. Johnson attempted to remove his Secretary of War, Ed Edwin M. Staten, from office. Staten 
was an ally of the Republicans and he had been critical of Johnson. In February 1868, Congress voted to impeach Johnson for committing, quote, high crimes and misdemeanors. And uh, it was quite, uh, quite an event, quite an episode in American history. The first time we see a, an American sitting, see, uh, seeing an American president um, impeached. And there was uh, quite a bit of, uh, quite of interest among the public. And <clears throat> this was uh, one ticket there you see is uh, referring to uh, admission into to to experience to see see this uh, process unfold. Well, Johnson was acquitted because the required two thirds vote of the Senate fell short, but only by one vote. President Johnson's flaws were obvious, but Paul Johnson argues that um, no constructive purpose was served by this vendetta. The only political consequence was the discrediting of those who conducted it, end, end of quote. In, in the bigger picture, there were Republicans who were altruistic and wanted Blacks to have justice, but there were other Republicans whose main goal was to make the Republican Party dominant in the South. Northerners who settled in the South and who were affiliated with the Republican Party were termed carpetbaggers. <clears throat> Anti-Republican Southerners believe that these Northerners descended on the South, bringing no more than they could carry in a carpet bag. And the Southerners believe that their purpose was to prey on the defenseless region through political manipulation of the gullible freedmen. These were the words of uh, Democrats, of, of Southerners. Southern Republicans were labeled scalawags. And they were the number of Southerners who had opposed succession in late 1860 and early 1861. Due in part to Southern resistance, the reconstruction of the South was less thorough and far from complete. Southern Blacks who made a good effort to rebuild their lives faced many obstacles. There was little unity among Southern, Southern whites on many issues, but many of them did agree on one, issue, one, on one thing. Southern Blacks must be kept wholly under the domination of whites. The worst cases were the acts of terror and violence against African-Americans. Although the economic institution of slavery was no more, many whites were unwilling to quote, accept or comprehend ex-slaves competing for jobs, lands, and profits, end of quote. There was considerable resistance to the idea of Blacks entering important professions and politics. During the Reconstruction era, some may argue that as a slave, a Black's value offered some protection. It was in the interest of the slave owner to, re to secure the slave's protection. In the report, of the Joint Select Committee to inquire into the condition of the affairs in the late insurrectory states, Mississippi politician Joshua H. Morris stated that as a free man, the ex-slave was deprived of all the protection which had been given to him by his value as property. He was reduced to something like the condition of a stray dog, end of quote. So we, this is one position. This is a, a Southern 
interpretation that was accepted by others. Of course, many others rejected it, rejected any hint that slavery had a positive econo economic feature and that it had any um, positive um, outcome for the, any African American. It was clear that Southern, Southern Democrats opposed a completely integer, in, integrated society. They, they oppose an integrated society. They believe such a, such a society would result in intermarriage and degeneration of the white race. Of course, Blacks likewise did not support the idea of Blacks having intimate sexual relations with whites of the opposite sex. It was important to maintain the integrity of the African-American group. Communities of free Blacks were new and required protection. Any suggestion of interracial marriage, and such an idea was actually rare, was a disrupting force. White Southerners feared a rise of black rape of white women. Newspapers spread rumors or exaggerated accounts of black violence. In such a paranoid climate, justice was often ignored. Mobs of vigilantes carried out evil acts. Vicious whites terrorized Blacks and even in, lynched them on the slimmest suspicion of, no, of knowledge or of or complicity in a rumored plot. Emancipation or no emancipation of Blacks, whipping, corporal punishment, and violent assault were accepted by some whites as proper treatment of Blacks suspected of crimes. Blacks were easy targets for angry whites who resented Northern attempts to transform the South. Responding to the Republican demands that Blacks be given land, education, assistance, or equal rights, Southerners often lashed out. In the years after the Civil War, thousands of innocent Blacks were harassed, tortured, and even murdered. The terror that Blacks faced included the Ku Klux Klan. This organization was founded in early 1866 by six young Confederate veterans as a social club. So it began initially as just a social club. The name itself was chosen for its novelty, its alliterative content, and its uncertain meanings. Rituals and rules were established as were officers. You had the grand cyclops, who would be the equivalent of the president, the grand magi, that would be the vice president, and the grand turk, be a, a marshal. Members were sworn to secrecy. They wore a white mask with holes for eyes and nose, a high conical cardboard hat, I guess to, to make them look more threatening, to make them taller, and a long flowing robe of no prescribed color. About 10, we often see them depicted with uh, in white robes. Formed out of an amusement, at least initially, and, and the desire to be pranksters, the society within a year became involved in vigil vigilantism. Southern historian John Bowles writes that with a kind of mystical fervor, the KK members roamed the South under the cloak of dark, they disrupted Republican political rallies, threatening Republican office holders, 
and intimidating black voters with torches and burning crosses, random beatings and killings and several massacres, end of quote. Members committed atrocities, which many of them would not have, would have, many of, of them would have shrunk from as individuals. To a degree, the Klan became a terrorist arm of the Democratic Party, even if some party leaders disliked the violent organization. One Klansman from Mississippi explained why violence against Black was necessary. Cruelty was, quote, justified by the fact that every little insolence, if left unnoticed, would be bragged about by a perpetrator by a perpetrator and, and foul observers to the others. The news would spread with great rapidity and there was no telling where it would end. So when a leading black would make himself particularly obnoxious and was considered dangerous, he was selected as an example. The Klan preferred immediate results that legal prosecution could not produce. <clears throat> As one Alabama explained, quote, I suppose these men who belong to this organization do not wish to take the trouble of having the master, the matter investigated in court when they can attend to it so easily, end of quote. So again, there was these unlawful acts carried out by the Ku Klux Klan. Congress passed the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871 that outlawed the characteristic, uh, the char the, these, these uh, characteristics of the Klan. Targeting one region of South Carolina, the federal government suspended habeas corpus and pursued mass prosecutions which, br which brought an abrupt halt to Klan terrorism. In the South, Klan activity declined and became more covert. Southerners opposed to African-American advancements resorted to more subtle methods of racial intimidation. Well, turning to elections, <clears throat> turning to political elections, President Johnson received some support at the 1868 Democratic National Convention, but he decided against renomination. Probably a wise move because I don't suspect many believe that he would have had any chance of victory. In the election of 1868, General Ulysses S. Grant defeated Horatio Seymour, winning 214 electoral votes to Seymour's 80. Grant and the, the Republicans campaign on a tough reconstruction policy, which the Democrats denounce. Almost all of the 500,000 African-American votes went to the Republicans. In February, 1869, Congress passed the 15th Amendment that protected the rights of all Americans. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous conditions of servitude. So very important amendment going along with the previous two amendments, the 13th and 14th and 15th. So Congress is doing, it's doing, uh, working hard to protect the, the rights of Blacks. In 1870, 
the last of the former Confederate states, and that is Texas, Virginia, Mississippi, and Georgia, rejoined the Union. So 1870, the former Confederate states have now rejoined the Union. Scandals of the Grant presidency contributed to the shortcomings of Reconstruction. Grant himself was an honest man, but a poor judge when choosing close associates. His appointees included manipulators who accepted illegal payments. So there were a number of scandals. There was the gold scandal, which involved James Fisk, who was Grant's Secretary of State. There was the Credit Mobilier scandal, which involved vice pres the Vice President. There was the salary grab scandal of 1873, when Congress gave members a significant raise. And the whiskey ring scandal that saw treasury officials giving some distillers a pass on paying excise taxes on whiskey. So the Grant presidency was rife with scandal. Now much of this mud did not stick to Grant and he actually handily won the election of 1872. He received 55.6% uh, of the vote to his opponent, Horace Greeley's 43.9%. Greeley, according to Paul Johnson, quote, supported virtually every progressive cause in sight, end of quote. So surprisingly, in one sense, we, with, with the, these scandals uh, and, a, and a damaged Republican party, uh, Grant still was able to, to, to win in 1872. In 18, 73, the nation was hit with an economic turndown. The banking panic of 1873 was due mostly to reckless speculation connected to aggressive railroad construction. One of the leading banking firms was J. J. Cook and Company of Philadelphia and New York. The bank closed its doors when it failed to entice foreign investors in buying railroad bonds. Bank credit became exhausted and the panic spread to other banks. The New York Stock Exchange closed for 10 days in September of 1873. It was the first ever closure of the New York Stock Exchange. Stock prices dropped, unemployment increased. The following year, America was hit with an economic depression. <clears throat> there was no significant economic improvement until 1878. Poor economic conditions contributed to a loss of political focus on the task of seeing a better life for former slaves. So Reconstruction, which did not, was not going all that well, 
was was hit hard with um, as a result of this economic depression and it just was not getting the attention that it needed. There was unfinished business, but people were looking elsewhere. And in conclusion, President Andrew Johnson lacked the political skills to see positive developments with reconstruction. Democrat leaders remain hostile to Republican legislation. By the end of President's, President Ulysses Grant's administration, there was less attention on reconstruction and the rights of Blacks. There was a shortage of good leaders as too many politicians sought only to look after their own interests. Lacking also was strong public support for proper treatment of African Americans. Reconstruction had failed. Thank you.